Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CNT podcast. My name is Tommy Terrio, and I am here with Justin Young Mark. What a guy. What a guy. Love that, man. All right. You're too kind. You're too kind. And as always, you know, sun is out, birds are chirping, and uh, Justin has a card of the week for us. So uh, let's get into that one. Ooh. We're going all the way back. To a 2023 card. I know. We're going way back. Manos Juli Rodriguez signed 64 in sort. I love that one. I love that card design and all. So mm-hmm. this came out absolutely beautiful. You can't really see it. Mm-hmm. I like his great, signature. He has a great signature. Uh, I wish he would have done it in the blue Sharpie I was holding, but he was running in black, which I'm not complaining, but I think the blue, you would have been able to see the signature a little bit better because he is wearing sure. the navy blue jersey, so it's just a little A little top. hard to see, yeah. Yeah. But still great auto. But still, it's Julio. How can you complain? You can't. You can't. Let me tell you, you can't. The cult, the cult following that he has, in, you know, especially in Seattle, is uh, practically unprecedented at this point. Yeah, no, he's good. He's a stud. Is he? He is in fact that he is. He uh he is actually going to uh you know might might make an appearance in today's uh today's episode. You just spoiled it. Now I don't want to do this episode. You ruined it. Too bad. So sad. Also, Tommy tried to get me to eat ball testicles. So he's weird, and we don't condone that. See, Justin never heard of Rocky Mountain oysters. And because he's coming out to Colorado for the first time, and I've never had them in my time here, you know, I think it'd be a good, uh, you know, shared experience. But you know, I do not. not, I do not want to eat ball testicles. Yeah, deep fried bull testicles. No, I no. Okay. No. <laughs> no. This is crazy to say that and suggest that. Have you you seriously never heard of that before? I remember hearing it now, but like I, I didn't like I don't. It's not something I've heard enough where like I would remember it. Probably yeah. now because we made a big deal about it now, but it's just not something like I've. I'm pretty sure I've heard about. It. I yeah, know people sure, ate full sure. testicles. I just didn't put two and two together enough because I didn't hear it about it enough. Yeah. All right. So that was that was a classic moment, and uh, should you should have been there when he first uh, realized what it was. It was comical. It was great. Oh, it was yeah, a legendary yeah. moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but today we're talking about the biggest disappointments of this MLB season thus far. The guys and the teams who have dramatically undermet expectations. So we're going to start off with with Julio Rodriguez and the Seattle Mariners. Pish posh. The Mariners are an average team this year. After many were saying, all right, well, they upgrade. They got Teoscar Hernandez, you know. They got, posh. they got, you know, Colton Wong to kind of solidify the uh, second base position and make it Dude, more. Colton amazing. Wong sucks so much. Colton Wong is this year's uh, Jesse Winker. No, but Jesse Winker got on base. Colton Wong just playing out sucks. That's true. Um, but Julio was underperformed. Teoscar Hernandez underperformed. The entire team is underperformed. And they're sitting in fourth place in the division at 34 and thir- or 35 and 35 or 34 and 35. Okay, let's not add, like, they're in a decent spot. I mean, everyone in their division besides the A's are playing well. Like, the Angels and the Rangers are overperforming. And then the Astros and Mariners are underperforming. Yeah, but there's no reason still for the Mariners to be at the point where they are at now. They ha- there was This was supposed to be the year that all the pitching and all the hitting was coming together. And we're like, all right. Now we're talking title contention for the first time in 20 years. But unfortunately, that's not the reality. And the Mariners seem to be back at, you know, about square one where they're underperforming. And I mean, like you can flash back to like a 2016 team that had, you know, Robinson Cano and Nelson Cruz and all this star power and underperformed. And it feels like it's a very similar narrative again. They're turning around. I'm not worried. Not if their main guy, who you know was the uh, 
leader of men last year, you know, drops 40 points in batting average in one year. Leave Julio out of this. He's heating up. He's been heating up for two months, and there's no heat. Hey, J.P. Crawford has been a top five shortstop this season, though. He okay, has great. Been That's one guy. Mike amazing. Trout all, Mike Trout is the single greatest proof that one guy is not a baseball team make. Luis Castillo has been nice. Bryce is nice. Miller is a killer. Bryce Miller's amazing. Yeah, Bryce Miller's been good, except for his one start against the Rangers. That we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Is it my turn now? It is your turn. Oh, I'll go with the team as well. The Chicago White Sox. No, I didn't expect them to be good necessarily, but I did not expect them to be 11 games under 500 and fourth in the division behind the Pirates. Uh, no, behind the Tigers. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I did not expect them to be worse than the Tigers. So. Most notably with minimal injuries, too. Yeah. Like I mean, they they dropped two games to the Mariners, a team that on paper, like, with the Mariners struggling, I would... Yeah. I guess the and both Lucas Giolito had 16 strikeouts and yesterday. And you still lost. And you Five still lost. Yeah. And, like, you guys barely beat them at the game I went to and got the Julio card signed. Like, you guys had to come back in the ninth to tie it and then go and win it in extras. Like, in the 11th, yeah. In the 11th, like, you, you kind of stole a wa- stole a win. Like, you didn't – I wouldn't say the White Sox outplayed the Mandos in that game. They kind of stole the win from them. I didn't, I don't I didn't see it so I don't know how exactly how it went down but I can I would buy I, it. I would say like I'm yeah. not saying the Manos played great but I I think they played mm-hmm. better than the White Sox did. Yeah. But like with no Luis Robert injury, no Tim Anderson injury, the only thing that the major only major loss was Jose Abreu. Who by the way, was 2020 AL MVP which again Why? everybody whoa, forgets. Whoa him. whoa 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 whoa. We'll talk about him later. Hmm. Right. I don't, yeah. But, yeah. Um, do you mind if I go on to my next guy unless you have anything else to say about him? I mean, they they're just the definition of men. Worse than that, even. Dude, the Cubs are better than them. Genuinely. Not by like a ton, but they're better. Yeah. I think a uh, win is a win. Year, going a into win this is year, a win. I, I I think I don't know. I might have picked. I might have, I might have not picked uh the uh Cubs to be better. I don't know. I think, I think it I was expected too. to be pretty close, though, either way. Yeah. This guy I don't think too. any team had very high expect either team had very high expectations, but still, he managed to, you okay. know, blow those out of the water. So, chill out, man. Um, chill my, out. Next, my next guy that I want to go with is uh, Justin Verlander. Yeah. Brought in for a king's ransom to the Mets in this past off offseason. Um, everybody was hailing it as, "Oh, this guy's going to revitalize his career and, or like you know, continue to like you know, flourish um, in a new in a new and bigger market." And the Mets are officially back, and even with Degrom gone, things are set. And we're going to have a good time. And it's going to be a party. And everybody's going to be happy. He signed a uh, two-year $86.5 million contract to be terrible. It is, in fact, not a parade in this city. Yeah. It is, in fact, not. Um, we are seeing... By making, by making that joke, we do not condone what John Morant is doing. Amen. Covering my legal basis this year, I just really like the saying before what happened happened. And I like to just... Pull yeah. it out and say it now. Uh, yeah, let's we make do sure not that we know all, what he's doing. Covering my legal sure basis. All, we all covered that. It's a parade inside all city, cool. yeah, but not in his parade city no more. Yeah. Um. So. The um with Verlander, the biggest deal is that. Um. He has a 0.5 war. He has a higher than four ERA. He has 39 strikeouts um, and a 1-2-2 whip, which is good, but it's not Justin Verlander. It's not. I'd also like to say it feels weird saying that a 40, like he's what, 40 right now? 
I believe so, yeah. Yes, he is 40 years old right now. It's weird to say that a 40-year-old's performance is disappointing, but after how well he pitched last year at 39... He won the like, Cy Young, right? Yeah, he was the Cy Young winner, yeah. Yeah, then it, I don't think it's crazy to say this. I, but it's still just the weird oxymoron of just, like, the weird thought that we're criticizing a guy who's 40 years old, but we know what he can do even at, like, even at old... Even at at 39, old he was the Cy Young. Yeah. Like, we know there's production in him, so we can't, mm-hmm. you know entirely not give him credit i agree i agree tommy i agree with you i appreciate that who's your next guy jose abreu yeah there we go uh he batted 292 and had a 354 on base percentage with the 507 slugging percentage in his nine-year run with chicago uh his time in houston he's hitting 214 276 and 264. Ouch. If he wasn't such a big name and he didn't win an MVP just a few years ago, he would be out of the league in the minors or a free agent. Yeah, those are not encouraging like, stats. His name, his namesake is the only reason he's in the MLB right now. Let's mm-hmm. say it as it is. Let's say it as it is. His namesake is the only reason he's here. It's also partly his contract. Yeah, but he only got that contract because of his name's sake. Yeah, I still think, I mean, like we saw last year, Robinson Cano get sent down. So I think, you know, like yeah, but Cano like wasn't on name, a $58 million deal. That's that's the biggest thing is three year, 58, 58 and a half million dollars, where to the, which is the point where like you kind of have to just eat it, really. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, uh, but you're right. I hate to say it, but you're right. I'm it's just funny. playing. It's with funny you. how often that happens. Oh, sorry. Ah uh, ha 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 ha! You're right so much. Ah uh, ha ha ha! It's funny. Move his, on. his contract history is really weird. He signed a bunch of one-year deals, so he had a six million. So he had a six-year deal. Opted out. Opted out of it halfway through, and then one year, one year, one year. Um, signed a one-year qualifying offer and then had a three-year deal and then a three-year deal. It's kind of just been a weird, like, kind of been a weird weird career contract history. Let the man do what he wants to do. Hey, man. Who are we to justify it? Hey, he's made his money. Who's your next player slash team? Um, the next guy is Anthony Volpe. The Yankees shortstop. Yep. Um, the guy was heralded as the, like, okay, we're passing the, uh, we're finally going to be able to pass the uh, shortstop throne onto somebody that's not. A rental. A rental, yeah. Uh, an IKF, because, I mean, DJ played at second, so, like, like an IKF, a Glaber Torres, some, no one, like, no, there was no one really that the organization ever felt was going to be the like perfect long-term solution until Volpe came around. And thus far, he has not looked like the long-term solution. He's batting under two, he's batting under 200, 70 OPS, plus um, nine home runs, a 1.1 war. His fielding's been pretty good. It's his rookie year. I think it's too early to say, like, I mean, yeah, he's been disappointing, but, like, it's his rookie year. Not every rookie's going to come out and be a star like L.A. De La Cruz. Some rookies struggle. Mike Trout got called up, and for the little part um, in 2012, I believe, he struggled a bit. And then in 2013, he really took off. Like, players, prospects come up, and they struggle, and that's okay. Not every yeah. prospect's going to come up and be a star right away. I think Otani. Because- I said Otani. Uh... Otani had a good 2018, right. and then until like a couple of years ago, he sucked. Yeah, he was terrible. Like, you got to give him time. So I wouldn't say he's been disappointing, yes, but not like I don't think he should have been brought up on this episode because, yes, he's yeah. been disappointing, but it's also been his rookie year. I say disappointing because of all the hype that was surrounding him and him being a homecoming for him and all this, that, and the other. That's why I said it. That's fair enough. I can get, I can get behind that. Who's your next? Who are you going with next year? The Houston Astros. They're third in the division. They're 39 and 33. 
They are a four-game losing streak right now. This is not the same World Series champions we saw last year. For they're no not even the best reason. Either. They're not the best team in Texas. No, but for they're no not even a top reason. two team in their division right now. Like if you look at the Astros on the whole right now, there's no crazy. Like there's no crazy hole. They just suck right now. The only problem is Jordan's injury. That's the biggest one. Is Jordan's mm-hmm. injury? They just suck. Michelle. Oh, and Martin Maldonado. There's the other big one. Okay. Is an absolute liability. Yeah. They uh, just plain out suck and might not even make the playoffs. Yeah. As of right now, they're not going to make the playoffs. I think Framber Valdez needs, still needs to be included in the uh, Cy Young conversation, though. Oh, 100%, dude. I have him in my franchise and I'm going to be the show. He is absurd. Yeah. He pitched a complete game shutout with 19 strikeouts for me the other day. Do you know who's not good in a MLB The Show for some weird reason? Tristan McKenzie. Mm. Yeah, it always pisses me off because I, I love Tristan. For, I traded for McKenzie, so my um starting, so I'm the Reds. My starting rotation is um Mc, um my top three is um uh, Hunter Green, Tristan McKenzie, and uh, Mackenzie Gore. Um, and outside of Hunter Green, it's been really disappointing. That's what you get for beating the Reds. Yeah, that's true. Ellie De La Cruz goes crazy though. And He's Christopher Morrell almost won MVP for me with 41 home runs. Christopher Morrell! I love that dude. He's a stud. Somehow Corbin Burns won it with a 21 and 7 record. I still don't understand that one, but you know. And like a two Robbed. something year, right? But still. Robbed. It was an absolute robbery, but you know. Mm. Shout so out Robin your... Cano for always retiring in uh in 2023 every every single like every single time you run the franchise or road to the show or anything else he always retires in 2023 so shout out robinson cano yeah um with the astros can i lump the yankees into there because i feel like they're the exact same storyline where they're in an absolutely loaded division and their star player goes down despite they have the same exact record they still aren't great they have the same exact record and also on a four game losing streak it's like the exact same storyline. I'm losing my marbles. Oh boy. Yeah, sure. You can kill them. I feel like those I feel like those two belong together in that one. Yeah. Which is crazy to say because they like those teams hate each other. Mm-hmm. There's more in common than you're willing to admit. Who's your um, last one? I got I got two more. What? The the Yankees one is just something I wanted to kind of throw in there on the side. Yeah, but you have, I have two more. What you have one? One I need. Well, yeah, one I need to lump in with yours. Um, yeah, I'm right. I want to go with the uh, San Diego Padres. Yeah, that's fair. Um, this I'd be willing to say I'd be willing to say the Dodgers out, though too. Outside of Hugh Darvish has been like or like outside of like. Outside of you, Darvish, there's no one that's been truly disappointing on that team. Just like if you look at like their Pythagorean win loss versus what they actually have, like they should be 38 and 33, and which I put think would put them like third, second or third in the division, as opposed to being fourth. So no, like, that would still put them at fourth. They'd still be behind the Dodgers by a game, by half a yeah. game. Yeah. No, I'd be willing to say the Dodgers have been more disappointing because they. They they were the favorite to win this division and maybe even win the whole thing, but they're, they're third in the back division. On a slide. They have uh, honestly, the as of now, I don't think they would make the playoffs. Yeah, no. As of now, they would miss the playoffs. Behind the Marlins. Yeah. Which is absolutely wacky. Like if we were doing, I would say in- I would say the Dodgers are more disappointed than the Padres. I would say the I think it's the other way around because we we I think we kind of knew going in because we didn't see the Dodgers make any moves while the Padres brought in Xander Bogarts. Yeah, but everyone still had the Dodgers winning the division. To be fair, the Padre that was also just because like the Dodgers have just been winners of the division. So it's exactly, like so it's shocking it's, it's that they're the not. Narr- it's more just been the narrative. I don't know. I think it's less surprising than you like than you think. I think it's less surprising than you would think. 
Um, yeah, the Rockies stink though, so you know, at least that's consistent. Let's go over to the NL Central. Why don't we? I saved the best for last. Hey, the Cardinals saw it, the Cardinals saw it, the last in the division. I called this at the start of the year, and everyone said I didn't know ball. I was an idiot, but look at us now. Almost at the halfway point, and they don't even have 30 wins. The Cardinals suck, the Cardinals suck. I hate the Cardinals. They are bad, they are bad. They suck at baseball. The Cardinals suck, the Cardinals suck, the Cardinals don't know how to win. They are one of the worst teams in baseball, and all I can do is celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. The Cardinals suck. The Cardinals suck. I hate the Cardinals. <laughs> what did you think of my song, Tommy? That was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> the Cardinals absolutely suck. They are 29-43. And nine games back from the division, they are worse than the Cubs. I called this. I knew it. I called it. You called me crazy for saying that the Cubs would be better than Cardinals. Here we are. The Cardinals suck. Yeah, they're only a game better than the Rockies. Yeah, dude. I genuinely think the Rockies... I genuinely think the Rockies can finish with a higher record than the Cardinals. The Cardinals No, because the trade deadline's coming. <sighs> No, the trade deadline's the coming. The Cardinals will probably sell with how bad they are. Yeah, you would hope so, but they're not going to. Dude, the Cardinals suck, and I love it. I love it. We're, we are we are here for it. Dude, it's like the best day of my life. All right. Um... So to piggyback off of that one, the biggest disappointment on the team, I think, has been Wilson Contreras, the turncoat. Um, who Contreras treated the the Cubs treated Wilson. I want I want before I'm sorry I'm jumping in. The Cubs did not like the way Wilson Contreras caught and called the game at catcher, so they always played him at DH last season. Instead of shouting that from the rooftops, they kept it in the organization. So in the offseason, Wilson could get a huge deal. He gets the huge deal with the Cardinals. And then he comes out and and shit talks the Cubs organization. But they like the Cubs treated Wilson way better than Wilson treated the Cubs. And not enough people talk about it. Not enough people talk about that. I've lost I still love Wilson. I don't I love him as a cub. I'm not necessarily I don't he's not in my top 20 favorite players right now. But all time, he's in my top 20 all time, but not right now. Hmm. I needed I needed to say it. Also, he's not very good as a toddler. He should have stayed a cub. I, yeah, he just my so. I mean, I didn't experience I didn't experience any of it, but you know. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Yeah, thanks for stealing my thunder. Is that what you were going to say? Well, I was going to talk about the uh, Wilson, the Wilson Contreras experience, and you know how it contrasted in Chicago versus well, St. Go. Louis. Sorry, I didn't mean go. go. No, go I mean, in you, depth. You, sum, I... you, you summarized what I was going to say anyway, so I'm good. Well, no, but go in depth because now I feel bad. I didn't think that's what you were going to say. Go in depth. I didn't go in depth at all. So Wilson Contreras was one of the stalwarts that actually stayed around and wasn't. Uh, part of the uh, mass exodus that was the 2021 Cubs. And it was a very interesting theme because it showed that the organization still thought that there was something there with him going out of that. Um, like they believed maybe they would get more value for him later, which they never did because he just left. Maybe they thought that um, he could be a good mentor, which like, is there any proof of that? I don't know who the Cubs have catching right now, but like, Miguel Amaya 
is come up. They got Jan Gomes, Miguel Amaya, and Tucker Barnhart have been we did, all but of our catchers. Jan, Go- Jan Gomes and Barnhart are both veterans, so that isn't necessary. And Amaya didn't come up till this year, so that's yeah. Rough. So I don't know. The idea that Wilson Contreras was a benefit by the last two years to the Cubs organization is a very odd one because he was quite good, but like they didn't really need him to be good because like there was no expectation for him to be good. These past two years, he's been playing for himself. Let's put it, let me put it the year and a half. He's been, he'd been playing for himself Mm -hmm. because there was nothing going with the team. He wasn't providing any veteran leadership to any of the upcoming catchers. The, as you said, the Cubs didn't like him. Well, they didn't. They didn't not like. They didn't like the way he called and taught games. Yeah, exactly. They didn't like him um, as a catcher. He was. He was. Yeah, he was um a good mentor for Christopher Morel when he came up. Like, so like, he was a veteran leader, just not like in a positional wise. Like he was. Yeah. He was great for Morel. Like their their bond is amazing. Like, uh, when they first played each other, Morel like ran over and gave jumped in and gave him a big hug. And that's awesome. The Cubs announcers ruined the whole moment, saying, like, oh, don't do that. He's a cardinal now. Ah, 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 you're enemies. Don't show emotion. Sucked. I hated this that. Is the, but... There are certain times when sports rivalries are the dumbest. Like, there are times yeah. when it's the most electric in it, like, really, you know. Like, you could tell going. from, like, the time Morel spent with Wilson last year. Like, he, Wilson he was, was his better, favorite teammate. He was a better player in person because of it. Yeah. Yeah, like, Wilson was his favorite teammate. You could tell. Yeah. Um... I just think it, the Wilson Contreras experience is a very jaded one because, like, he did everything that he could for the organization, and they repeatedly stabbed him in the back. Because yeah. the thing is, is he was a great catcher, but the organization, not the manager, the organization didn't like how he called the games. Mm-hmm. That's but like they also that's like they Billy kept Bean. it under wraps. This, this is the same thing that happened with Billy Bean. Like, that, this is the same. Re- this is my one frustration in Moneyball. Is Billy Bean, as the general manager of the Oakland A's, should not be the manager of the Oakland A's. You are given a job to do in your organization, whether it's manager or GM or president of baseball ops or owner or scout or social media manager or whatever you do. You stick That's a Justin in, Yomark reference. You stick in your lane and you do your job and you do that to the best of your ability. You do not trounce on someone else's ability. Wilson Contreras was a fine catcher, but he, his abilities were disrespected by the Cubs organization. Mm-hmm. I see. Going back to the money ball topic, I agree that like the GM shouldn't like upcharge the manager, and also it's come out like the manager in Moneyball like when it really happened was more on board than it was portrayed in the movie. Yeah. That's what that, that was my frustration. That was my frustration with the movie. I didn't know the actual okay. story behind it, but like yeah, in the um, movie, in the movie, I agree. But like also that team was only the Billy Bean built that team, which was his job, yeah. but then the manager wasn't playing it the way it needed yeah. to be. So then Moneyball he, he looked back. Moneyball does he, not represent that team at all. Right. That like, team is like, so much better than the money. Like, but then, but Billy Bean's job, like he looked like he was doing a bad job because the manager wasn't doing like. So at some point, I think Billy Bean did need to jump in and talk to him, not mm-hmm. over over chop him and overtake yeah. his job, but talk to him yeah. about it. Which what are you looking they for? Do, upstage? They do upstage. They do that in the movie, but also in real life, the manager was way more on board with it than mm-hmm. the movie portrayed. Yeah. Like, like two, I wanted to the point two out, things I hate about the movie is, there was a Cy Young that, caliber player and an MVP caliber player on that. I team. was about to bring that up. The movie does not show what they also didn't, they also didn't show their electric clothes off. Mm-hmm. Also, Scott Hatterberg was not like the greatest thing, like, was not God's greatest gift to baseball, like no, the movie thinks, like the movie thinks he is. He's great. Or no, not, they, like he's they, pretty good. They immortalized the home run. And I think that's about it yeah. on him in the movie. Like, because that home run was God's well, so the story was all about him. him. And, uh, and in 2002, I mean, he hit 280. It was the best. It was I don't, best I don't feel like the story was all about Star. Like, if any of the players, like, he was the biggest, like, emblem of it. And, like, it was, like, that was, he was the symbol of the I've, GM versus the manager. Yeah, but I also feel like he was, like, the most money ball type player. Like, he was a catcher torn first baseman who couldn't throw the ball. Who mm-hmm. signed for like five hundred k? Like 
he was the most money ball player of it. Mm-hmm. So it kind of made sense that he was brought up yeah. a lot. And his salary history is fascinating because he didn't make like that much money relative. Like if you look, kind of look at it and everything, mm-hmm. like to like comparative to what he could have. I agree. He went. He um. Uh, he went to uh, Washington State University too. Oh, he was a Cougar. Mm-hmm. Mm. Also, um, went to um, also from Yakima. So that's that's a, right that's by us. Yeah, it's two 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 hour drive from you. Two hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Out. Um, but shout out shout out Scott Hatterberg. We love uh, Scott. Who was a good fielder when he was a cat or a first baseman too, which you know mm-hmm. needs needs to be better appreciated. I agree. Um, interestingly, he also played for Cincinnati for a couple of years at the end of his career. Or you know. Yeah, but um, Cincinnati sucks. Eh, not then they didn't. That's sad. Ooh, good episode. Um, can I can I do one more thing? One one more question for you here while we're here. While we, while I, I got suppose. Here. Who would you um put? The, I mean, what, what are the biggest surprises? Like the positive surprises then for you while we're here. The Diamondbacks. Coleman Chao's not a surprise to me because I said he would be in the top seven MVP voting. But like Cor- the other people. Currently, currently number three in the race right now. Everyone called me crazy on the episode for saying he'd be top seven. He's top three right now. I know ball. Yeah, that was I'm a good call. I'm leaving good that call there. On that one. I'm leaving that there. Yeah, that was a good but call. But the, the Diamondbacks are like one of the best teams in baseball. Like they're leading their division. Mm-hmm. Um. Has to be the Marlins. Rangers, the Rangers and Marlins are another ones. I don't think it's the Rangers. I this mean, is what no one's been supposed to do. No, all everyone on the episode predicted they would be like third in the division. No one predicted them to yeah. be first in the division. But in hindsight, it shouldn't it shouldn't be that surprising. They were they've been supposed to do this for a while. Yeah, I suppose the Marlins are spending there, money yeah. and drafting and all this that and the other like. Uh Bryce Miller. And Yuri Perez have been surprised. Like they've come up and yeah. dominated. Yuri Perez, I got to see a Yuri Perez start, which I was ecstatic nice. about. Um, it, ha- dude, it has to be the Marlins, though. The Marlins have to be se- the biggest surprise. Yuri in the game, I want you went seven shutout innings against yeah. the Manos. His yeah. ERA is one point eight. Yeah, he's nineteen, or is he? Tw- yeah. He just turned twenty, right? He just oh. turned twenty, I think. He, I, I think. He, let me. Let me fact check that one he can't even drink alcohol legally and he's out here being one of the best pitchers in baseball he yeah he just turned 20 about a month ago he was just a teenager he's he's two years older than me and he's out up in the majors dominating two months yeah crazy yeah but the marlins have to be easily the biggest surprise I don't even think it's that close either. Yeah, I don't with, know. I feel like the Diamondbacks are up with there. The Diamondbacks that, with the Diamondbacks, there was like hope of the future. But like, but without, the future wasn't supposed to be this year. They kind of, I mean, you were, you were banging that drum. I am I was banging the Corbin Carroll drum. Mm-hmm. But for like. I didn't, I didn't day, expect I mean, them. I did not expect them to lead the division this late no. into the year. No. Oh, another surprise. Larissa Rice hitting. His body average being this high, like we yeah. knew he was good, but, but he I didn't like think we realized he could hit last, last year in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, but dude, he's at like four eighty eight right now. Like, I'm sorry, three eighty eight right now. Like, I genuinely think he could hit four hundred. It would be Herculean. Let's put it that way. Like, dude, he is good. He is good. It's kind of, so. This is an interesting one, but Pete Alonso. Who has a really, really low batting average, but a high OPS plus. He has 22 homers and a two a war of two. And he doesn't surprise me. Currently injured too. That doesn't surprise me. Like he's a home run or like he's a big hitter or strikeout, I feel yeah. like like type of player. So I, that doesn't really surprise it, me. Like yeah, he's his, having a good career, year. His career is weird. If you look at his career, his he has a weird career that he's gone through so thus far. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Reds has have, the Reds and Pirates combined have to be up there. Yeah. I think the Reds especially, because they were, you know, supposed to be last in the division. 
pretty handily. This is one. This and now is it's mine. the Cardinals. This is mine that I'm gonna that I'm gonna bang my own drum for. Is I said watch out for the Reds. Like the Reds are a team that no one was giving any credit to before the season. I was like, watch out, there's some talent coming up. I'm gonna tell Nove Marte to make his debut. Um, oh. they have a 15 percent chance to make the postseason. Well, interesting. Good for them. I don't think they'll do it. Good for them. Um. TJ Friedel has been one of the emerging stu- like one of the emerging studs on that team. Uh, posting a 306 batting average with an 828 OPS across 49 games. I mean, come on now. Mm-hmm. Um, the pitching besides Alexis Diaz has not been great. Um, Hunter Green's been good, not great, but Alexis Diaz and Buck Farmer have carried really. Yeah. Um, Alexis Diaz posting a 186 ERA, 18, um, 18 saves, and a 257 ERA plus, a 0.828 whip. Um, that team has been great. Um, I don't know where to classify the Angels. You can't be surprised that they're finally doing good when they have the No, you can't be players. surprised that they're finally doing good, but like it's surprising at the same time because they haven't been. It's kind of a weird conundrum. I feel like they're very properly like they're doing ex- they're doing what they're supposed to, nothing more, nothing less. So I feel like we're mm-hmm. good. I feel like that's kind of a set one. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. I I enjoyed this episode. This was fun. Uh, you, you're just saying that because you, you want. I love you the want money ball. I love the money interjection. You wanted to. You want to butter me up because you want me back next week. You're just trying to butter me up. I love the money ball interjection. I'm on you know, to you. I'm on to you. Or just you know, this is a this was a good podcast. Yeah, it was okay. Wow. Um, wow. Okay. Way to take all the butter off of me. Whoa. 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 What? What are you talking you were, about? You were buttering me up, and then you took it. What are you talking about? Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. I don't understand. Thank you all so much for watching. We appreciate it, as always. We will see you all next week, whether me or Justin or whatever are here next week or not. We will see you all next week. I hope Eli's here next week. <laughs>